Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In Moto 14, we gained the ability to save form presets in Moto. And I think this is a rather underutilized feature. I think it flew under the radar a bit and it's actually super useful. So in this video, I'm gonna show three applications for this, starting with the environment background. So first of all, what's a form? A form is just a sort of generalized viewport in Moto. It can hold properties, like if I select my uh, geometry here, this is the item properties form. We can see all these properties shown in the form. Uh, it can hold icons, like these are all forms here with the uh, tool icons, even the tool properties as a form. You know, these are forms down here with the play bar. All this stuff you can customize in Moto are these generalized viewports called forms. And now we can actually save presets or just basically take a snapshot of all the items in that form and save it and then recall it later. And you can see how useful that could be. So if I deselect my geometry here and for instance, go over to uh, the base material. Now, if I wanna save this material, I can create a regular material preset, but I can also take a snapshot of the form. And then sometimes that's a little bit better way to go in my opinion. So I can take a snapshot of just this one tab here. You see this material is like several different tabs. So I can just go over here and say new for this tab here, or I can do all tabs and it'll save a form preset for all the tabs. And what's interesting is I can even save a preset for each of these sections. So forms can be divided into sections. Here we've got a section for surface normal and one for diffuse and specular. And I can save just a snapshot of just the channels in that section as well which I'm gonna do for the environment material. So I go over here to the environment material. I like to work in the advanced viewport and I like to have different colors in the backgrounds. I think it just makes the viewport more vibrant and honestly more interesting to work in. And so here I've created a number of different form presets just for this section right here. I don't need to create it for everything, this whole tab. I don't need the visibility or the physically based daylight or the environment fog. I just need the colors here. So I can change this really quickly to a Houdini type gradient like that or I could change it really quickly to just a flat Maya gray like that, or I can change it to something interesting like a sky gradient, all right? Pretty cool, nice way to work. And you can see the advanced viewport picks up the colors of these gradients here. If I press O for display options, I have a lighting parameter here in the advanced display options as well as a background parameter. So you keep the background environment, you're gonna get all of these form presets in your environment in your background. And you're picking up the lighting here as well. So I'm getting this sort of yellowish lighting at the top and some, some blue lighting at the bottom. But what's cool about the advanced viewport is if I have a form like uh, this Maya gray form, I like this you know sort of standard gray background, but the lighting's not great, especially if I get down to the bottom here like that. But I can actually separate these two in the advanced view viewport. So I press O and I just go over to lighting and change that to default viewport. Now I've got nice bright lighting all around my object even though my background is just this one flat gray. And so sometimes it's a nice way to work. So I even use the Sculptron background sometimes as well, which I like that color. So let's create a new one. I'm gonna go over here to uh, my presets. We'll just start with this gradient gray here. And I'll pick a nice soft pink color for the top, like so. And for the bottom, I'll go with a nice powder blue. These are the instantly the uniform colors I had to wear when I ran track at Kansas, pink and blue. Uh, there's a whole story behind that. But anyway, so I like the pink and blue, sort of a nice little pastel viewport here. And to save this, I just go up to this little section. Again, I don't need to save this whole panel here or especially multiple panels. I just need to save this little section right here. So I'll say new, we'll call this pastel gradient. Whoops, if I could type, pastel gradient. And boom, there it is. I can recall it at any time now. So I can go back over to Maya Gray. If I want something more colorful, I can go to pastel. Now these will save to your config. So you wanna go over here to file config save to make sure these get saved. Otherwise, if you crash or something like that or exit out of Moto unexpectedly, um, they won't be saved. So now that's saved to the config. Okay, so now that you got a taste of that, let's look at something a little more complex with materials. Here I've got my Pixel Fondue shader ball scene. I'm actually gonna split this scene and make the right-hand viewport a Octane view. Although if you don't use Octane, you're welcome to make it a, a Moto preview as well. And I'm just gonna fire up this view here. All right, let's take a look at this material. So over here in our shader tree, I've got my standard default material here. Now you can of course use material presets, but again, sometimes it's just faster to go over here and grab something from the list. In this case, I like to make sort of base materials, base metal, base plastic, base glass, and have them available just with a click from a dropdown. So if I go over here and say, I wanna to go to a base glass material, I just select that, changes all the uh, material settings and all three of these tabs to the snapshot I had of a glass material. And there it is. I could also go to like a base metal like that. And if I wanna change the type of metal, I just change the specular color 
to something like gold. And there we go. That's very fast. And it may be faster than actually for plastics and metals and glasses than going to the material library and searching around. So if I want to do something like um, a cloth material, so I'm actually going to uh, go and set this back to default material. That's one thing you may want to do is just immediately is just save your default material as a preset so you can always get back to defaults. Since I've already done that, I'm going to do a quick cloth material. Cloth material is really just a, a super, it's almost like a, it's just a super diffused material. So I'm going to turn up the, the roughness to like 95% here and I'll just leave everything else the same. I'm going to take a snapshot of all three because I want my presets to all show up under here under the all tabs presets. So I'm just gonna go over new, all tabs for material. We'll call this base fabric, hit okay. And we'll have this now available to us under my presets. I've got a base fabric, a base glass, a base metal, and a base plastic where you can just select it, quickly choose a color, boom, I am off and running with plastic. Here I've got another scene. This is a bunch of um, kit bash objects I bought off of ArtStation or someplace like that. And often when you load up FBX files, you'll know that your materials are a little bit screwed up. And this is where these form presets come in handy again. So if I go over here to my shader tree and I look at one of these materials, I'll just select it from the uh, render viewport here. You'll notice that it looks okay over here, but if I look over here, the FBX import actually put the specular amount and the Fresnel amount both at 100% and the specular color at black. These are settings you would never use. And they're all like that, right? Usually if it screws up one thing, it screws up everything. And so sometimes I load up FBX files and I'll see like the um, luminosity set to 100% in black or 100% in white. So to quickly fix all this, you know I have my default material as just a snapshot, a form preset. So I can go over here to filter, set it to material and just select all my materials at once. And then we'll just revert them back to the default material using our snapshot here, our form preset. So now these are all the default material. You can see our specular and Fresnel amount are back to normal values. You got a white specular color and it's kind of showing up here in the viewport better. So that's another application for these form presets. A third application is creating form presets for lights. So I've got some area lights here, these green guys lighting my shape. And so I'm going to select this one. And I have some Kelvin color temperature presets already set up. So I could change this one to like a warm halogen incandescent. And you can see that changing right there. Select another one. And let's maybe make this one uh, day white on this side. And this back one will make a new preset. So I'm going to go over here to the light color. And I'm just pasting in a, uh, a color I've gotten for uh, 10,000K blue daylight. I got that off the internet there. So, you know, Kelvin color temperatures, let me just make a new one here. So we'll just call this 10,000 K blue sky. Kelvin color temperatures are interesting. There's a lot of literature on the internet uh, I've discovered while creating these um, sort of <laughs> lots of algorithms with people who are really trying to convert the Kelvin color temperatures to RGB. So these are the ones that I found, but you can, you know, there's various other ones. And if you remember, Moto actually has a color uh, Kelvin um, setting right here. So I could set this to like 4,000, but it's a little bit different than the RGBs I got off of various internet sites for 4,000 Kelvin. So again, that's sort of up to you. One thing to keep in mind is if I use this whole form preset here, it's for this whole section. So it'll affect radians, it'll affect dissolve, it'll affect the type of shadows, it'll affect the size of uh, the area light. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so if I make this area light a little bit bigger, just using channel hall here and get a little more light there, if I go back over here to the form preset, it's going to reset that back to one because that was saved. Again, it just snapshotted this whole section. So that may or may not be the best thing for you. It's really up to you. You can actually save a form preset for this entire tab. So this is, let me just check this out, 5500K day white, I think it was. If I do the all tabs here, and I say new for all tabs area light, and we call this 5500K daylight, I believe it was, and hit OK. Now I've got that under the all tabs here. And so it's gonna affect every single one of these settings, including the transform. So if I put this back at zero and I set it from here again, this is going to reset it to that entire snapshot from, you know, it's gonna snapshot this whole thing, including these display settings. It's gonna snapshot all of these tabs. What's interesting and sort of um, 
uh, I didn't expect this, is it'll show up here in the item list as well if you save all tabs like that. Here it is right there, Airlight 5500K or 5500K Daylight. That all tab setting actually saved it as an item preset. So I can add it in here if I want. And now I've got another one. Again, it saves the transforms and everything else. So, you know, you may find that interesting. You may you know want to create a whole bunch of lighting presets just like that. It'll save the transforms, the display, the sizes, the display um, properties, everything. So and it'll put it up here in the uh, item list for you as well. I don't actually want that there. So I'm going to delete that preset. So I'll just say delete and I'll pick it here. This is the all tabs one. Hit OK. And now if I go over here to the item list, it's no longer there in my light items. So there you go that's um yeah three different uses for presets environment backgrounds uh base materials we don't have to actually find a full-blown material preset you just do a snapshot of a base metal or a base plastic or a base cloth or whatever and also uh light settings you can do some nice uh presets and light settings as well so keep that in mind again like i said i think form presets are sort of uh underutilized you can use these for render settings or output settings or shader settings, pretty much anything in these forms, it'll just be snapshotted and saved as a preset. Yum, yum.